Hello and welcome back to the Marketplace Marvel series. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here in our Palo Alto studio. This is a series where we're featuring all the latest, greatest people making the tech happen in cloud and obviously in the marketplace. Here with Steven Orban, VP of Migrations and ISVs and Marketplace with Google Cloud. And Eric Garnier, who's the VP of Product at Datadog. Gentlemen, thanks for coming into theCUBE for the special Marketplace Marvels. Awesome to be here. Thanks for having us, John. Steven, set hey. the table for us. Folks watching this, we've, we've had some other videos. Talk about the Marketplace Marvels. Why are we doing this series? What's the focus of Google Cloud and the Marketplace Marvel series? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for hosting us, John, and big thanks to EREX and the entire Datadog team for, for being on this journey with us. So look, it's a super exciting time for Google Cloud and an even more exciting time for our marketplace as we really continue to see significant growth from software companies like Datadog, who really are leaning in to make marketplace their default way to meet customers where they are as they transform with GCP. So we have lots of large customers like Home Depot, Goldman Sachs, and Mayo Clinic, who are really making significant moves to Google Cloud for whether it be a digital or an AI transformation. And as that happens, our backlog of committed spend grows with it. And customers, of course, have two ways to satisfy those commitments. One, by consuming Google Cloud products or by consuming one of the thousands of ISVs in our marketplace. And as we've added more and more capabilities for ISVs to find and reach our customers, including selling alongside them with our field teams and recently adding support for customers to buy from the reseller of their choice, we're, we're finding that actually customers migrate faster from when they buy from the right software company or the right ISV at the right time. And consequently, our ISVs close larger deals faster and more often. But at the same time, to really be successful growing a marketplace business, it's just like anything in life and business, really. You get what you put into it. So, so we've started this series, and, and thanks again, John, for hosting and EREX for, for doing it with us today, to really shine a light on some of the ISVs who, who do this well, how they've done it, to both help our customers understand why Datadog is such a great choice for observability on Google Cloud and to help ISVs achieve similar uh, levels of, of success. And I think what you'll hear from EREX is that Datadog has leaned in on all of the three necessary components of successfully partnering with us on Marketplace. First, they build unique solutions that customers can only find on GCP. Datadog, as you know, is one of the most comprehensive observability solutions out there. And it's certainly true of Google. They've built more than 750 integrations into more than 35 of our services. And they do so really quickly. As soon as we launch services, like with Vertex, they, 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 they have observability for Vertex right away. They market it really well to their customers in the right place and their product experience. And we have great collateral for our respective yeah. field teams to, to understand how and why Datadog is a, is a great choice on GCP. And then they engage in deep post-sell relationships with us. So, so, so those are the three things that you know, we see all ISVs and Datadog does in spades. Steven, you know, we're really proud to host this. You know me, I'm a fan of marketplaces now in a time where more than ever, you know, people are architecting and building and deploying new kinds of technologies and solutions. It's a really integration world and this cloud next gen is here. Um, of course, Datadog's been there from the beginning, kind of present in the creation of wave one of the cloud. Eric, Eric talk about uh, Datadog. You're the VP of product, which is, you know, as we always say, you get the keys to the kingdom. You get the roadmap, you talk to customers, you get to make decisions. Datadog's been very successful, huge, loyal um, customer base, a product market fit, you know, that's legendary. But now as you guys look at this next wave coming, a lot of integrations, a lot going on. Give us a setup data dog for us with folks watching, and then we'll get into some of the things I want to ask about the marketplace and how you guys are integrating in. So, so what's going on with data dog? Give us the update. Sure, so hey, first, thanks uh, John. Great being here with you guys, you and Steve. And uh, I mean, as you said, data dog is uh, been pretty well known now. We are, you know, I think the kind of observability solutions in the market but we also have a both observability and actually a security solution like that platform we actually really bring all those kind of insights from all the different layers of your stack coming from the infrastructure all the way to your applications and going with you know logs traces but also security signals that we all kind of bring together into really i think like really adding value for customers in in few ways which is the first and the mission of Datadog and what's created for that is actually breaking down silos 
between the different uh, organizations, between the different teams. We talk about DevOps, now we talk about DevSecOps. We like including more and more of those personas into the Datadog kind of uh, platform. But we really help our customers identify you know, performance issues, security issues, being able to reduce that mean time to resolution, to mean time to detections, and get to the root cause of that. What's you know, been like evolving with Datadog over the last uh, few years, I mean, the company has been there for more than a decade now, now is actually really thinking about how we bring that information up front for our customers, how we bring that with some AI features and really making sure that we make the most value of all the different um, telemetry or different data you can go and send to Datadog. And as everybody knows, this is a very, very large kind of environment. So yeah. breaking down those silos is even more critical because you have way more of that stack, way more complex, and that's where customers really need some solution like Datadog for that. I definitely want to get into some of those non-disruptive operational elements that are needed for measurement and tracking and, and doing all that observability as it changes and evolves too. But also you guys have been very successful on winning over the developers, very organic uh, growth. That gets you in the market, that makes you guys big, you're successful, but now you're a part of the fabric. And as we look at the marketplace opportunities, things are happening a little bit differently. It's, it's more, it's growing. How do you guys look at a, that customer, not only new acquisition of customers, but also serving existing customers? How do you guys think about the marketplace and how does that factor into your growth strategy and your go to market and making it go faster? What's your, what's your take on that? Because I can see both sides of that. Continue to get new customers, but they already, they already have data done. They got to integrate in. What's the view of the marketplace and how do you look at that? So we, the, the way I would say we see the marketplace, but I would take even more broader the partnership with Google here. Cause I mean, the marketplace is one of those elements here is really thinking about this holistically, which is uh, if you look at the marketplace, the marketplace is we see more and more customers going to the marketplace. This is where we see customers that actually do want to, most of them simplify their procurement, simplify their legal processes because they already have those agreements in place with, um, with uh, Google and uh, with the marketplace. And they actually looking for that to to like leverage more and more solution. And Steve said it earlier, they, they do have pretty large commitment on those marketplace and they want to be able to go and retire some of those commitments. So the ability to you know leverage uh, the Datadog solutions and combining it, I mean, combining Datadog and Google Cloud kind of services spend together really help them into going into those higher commitment tiers with the marketplace. So that's really seen from a customer perspective as a as a true value to be able to to be able to just like you know have their spend hit their, hit their spend and then at the end of the day have some like better deals and better mm -hmm. solutions from uh, both uh, Datadog and from a Google perspective. I love that the point of the point of engagement is wherever the customer needs faster get conversion on getting the product out there, make more money. I want to get into the, I mean, I, got, I buy the economics. I'm a huge fan of marketplaces, but what's interesting about the marketplaces is the use cases and the integrations. Can you comment on Datadog? Because of your market position, you have a lot of touch points with customers infrastructure. And certainly as Google adds more cloud services, okay, mm -hmm. back in the old days, I got three integrations, I got Stripe and I got some APIs. Now there's hundreds of services. Give me the example of the use cases that you guys are tying in with Google and what, how many services, what's the service integration look like? What is the, what is the kind of, I guess, set the table for what the new integrations look like. Cause there's a lot, the integration is a big deal. Yeah. So let me start, maybe uh, uh, Steve can add on top of this. So, so we, Steve did say we have 750 integration data. Dog. We have about 35 with Google Cloud services. So it's a large number of those services we do support with uh, Datadog, and this is across, I would say, the entire spectrum of the services. You know, we we support some ephemeral workload infrastructure like serverless with Cloud Run, Cloud Functions. We obviously support support containers. We've been a very big kind of uh, uh, actor in the container space, so we do support with GKE. We do have ability to kind of detect all the different instances. We as much as you spend them up, Datadog is already there on part of it. This is actually really key, it's not just like a, a high level integration, but to really go deep into those integrations. We support 
you know, the AI solutions from uh, Google too, like we had, and I think we were the first partners to have an integration with Vertex AI, uh, really getting into that visibility into, you know, the AI offering from Google and making sure that, you know, from Datadog, we bring that information into your overall stack. Because now what you're running on top of AI is as important as any of the other workloads that you actually have. And we keep kind of go expand and expand those solutions and having more and more of those integrations. And the, the beauty of this and the partnership is really that hey, as Google builds some of those, we already kind of work, working with them, partnering with them ahead of time to be able to you know, almost launch at the same time and make sure that from the customer perspective, they have that integrated solution, integrated view, and really be able to have uh, the observability across the un entire solution they have running on Google. So that's, I think, one of the, uh, the, the, the key value we provide. And you ask for kind of, you know, an example and, uh, and you know, how we see that yeah. is really from a cloud migration perspective. All the customers, when they think about either migrating to the cloud or even sometime being able to like move from different cloud providers to another one, they want to make sure they have the entire solutions supported within, you know, the existing processes. They use Datadog uh, for that migration and that really helped them into have a seamless move, seamless migrations to go from wherever they are to where they really want to go, really want to be with Google and being able to have that integrations and support with the less disruption they can on their services, on their applications, and obviously on their businesses at the end. I think interoperability yeah, I mean, is a big I, point there. Steven, talk about the Google, okay, go ahead. So the Google. Yeah, I was just, I was just going to add and double down on what um, uh, what Eriex was saying. I think when, whenever we talk to a customer about any kind of big migration or a transformation that be, they might be doing, the first thing that they want to know is how are they going to be able to monitor and observe these workloads so that they can do so safely. It's really about kind of reducing the risk of, of moving to cloud as fast as possible. It is, Iriac said, like, we share a pursuit in wanting to bring that transparency to customers. And it's one of the first conversations we have is, okay, how are you going to observe your workloads? Datadog happens to be not just a uh, leader in this space, but also a great partner, runs really well on Google Cloud, is integrated with more than 35 of our services. And, and you know, Iriac's mentioned they were the first observability partner to, to give transparency into Vertex. So now that AI workloads have become one of the most top of mind things for most CIOs and enterprises that we work with, they're able to build AI applications with speed and confidence because Datadog can observe it because they were the, the sort of the, the, the first to, to, to make that available. Now, just to give an example, we also talked about like breaking down silos and making it kind of consistent across. We, we worked with, together with Datadog, we worked with one of the largest FinTech companies out there that, that process lots of um, uh, uh, payments for customers. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they consolidated on Datadog as an observability platform across their entire um, sets, many different lines of business, because it was just going to be so much more convenient. The tech was better and it helped them across, you know, the, the uniformity um, of their environment. So really exciting um, uh, customer win for us together also. Yeah, I want, I want to follow up if you don't mind. I mean, Datadog has a great platform for strategy. I mean, the interoperability, Eric just mentioned that's a huge feature, right? I mean, cross environments is, is key. Question for you, Stephen, on the Google side, can I, as a Google customer with my sing, single service account, give Datadog access to my projects and can it discover new ones? Can I fully bring Datadog in to all my services to get that telemetry value? Um, and then Eric, I want to ask you, does that translate over into the interoperability piece? I think that's, a key killer feature right there. Steve, what do you think? 100%, I mean, the answer is easy. 100%, yes, you can. Um, and Datadog has made it easy, not just to find and discover Datadog on, on Google Cloud, but also to wire it up into all of our different services so that, that customers can, as I said before, migrate with speed and confidence, knowing that they're able to observe the workloads they're running on Google Cloud. Eric, on your side, you guys have a UX that's, well, people love your U, 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 user interface and user experience. Does that change at all? I mean, I'm a, you're a customer. I, I want to be able to see everything, but I don't want to feel like I'm jumped into a silo. And what's uh, what's your uh, answer to that? Because that that would be that would be cool if you could be integrated into Google services and yeah. not so feel like anything happened. Exactly. I mean, the, the way we do integrate with Google is like we we do have 
for all UI within Datadog. And this you know, very intuitive UI, as you say, uh, is well known from the Datadog perspective to be like, you know, we don't have any query languages. We just you know, make it simple, but not simplistic. This is one of our motto internally, making sure that, hey, we solve the most complex use cases, but from a customer perspective, it sounds pretty straightforward and very easy. We do have that platform first approach, which is all the data are actually together, which means we have a, a data platform behind this where we remove again that complexity and make sure that we provide that very simple view, but really connect it between all the different type of um, telemetry we're getting. Because again, Datadog, we go from yeah. your, your, your code all the way to security through your infrastructure, through your logs, through your APM, your applications, your traces, um, your, your even like cost now. So we integrate all of that. The way we bring this into the Google ecosystem with, with the marketplace is really about how you want to like initiate that uh, integration with Datadog. Yeah. When you think about Datadog, you want it to be, like, I would say not Datadog, observability in general, you want it to be everywhere. You don't want to have like miss one application or another one because those could be your like, you know, your, your, your weakest point and this is where something can break. You want to be ahead of that. So with Google Cloud, what we're doing, we actually, with that, you know, single kind of Google Cloud service account, you set it up once and then all your services can actually benefit from it, which is if you're running on GKE, we'll be able to actually automatically detect any new clusters you'll be launching if you run on the serverless side, we'll have like a new sidecar for like cloud runs to really simplify that instrumentation. So every time you will launch a new workload, Datadog will be there along the way. We even bring information about your cloud cost, so which means we can even tell you what's happening within your cost, both um, in Datadog alongside observability, so you can measure your cost versus the performance of your applications. And we even like bring, you know, yeah. uh, security data like our cloud, uh, cloud uh, infrastructure entitlement, entitlement, sorry, management, which brings those informations into Datadog to know exactly how your whole environment is actually configured. So that's, you know, very unique integration and very deep integration we have between the two platforms. I definitely. It's want just to... it's a super it's a super powerful combination. Also, John, I think one of the things Eriex just mentioned is as a customer launches new GKE clusters or launches new serverless uh, functions or capabilities, Datadog automatically looks at it and, and can observe it. If you think about it, there's, there's oftentimes in a big enterprise context, the tension between like a central cloud or security team and then the individual development teams who are constantly launching new capabilities. Datadog's capability in this space helps bridge that gap and get the best of both worlds. So the developers can still be free to launch new things, but they're going to get the observability and security they need uh, in it that they can do it with confidence. Yeah, and I think that's what I was jumping in on because that is a huge feature because one, Datadog wins because they get more access to services on Google. Google, you win because Datadog has an installed base and the client experience is going to guarantee confidence in the telemetry and data that they're going to be getting. And this becomes super important. I want to get your thoughts to the customer impact now, because if you look at today's world we live in, um, there's not a lot of confidence going on around, um, am I observing everything? Are those updates going to go through? Um, I don't want to see disruption. Never mind breaches and security incidents, we're talking about disruption. Just classic DevOps gone bad disruption. And that's in, in the absence of observability. Eriex, you, you and I were talking about this before we came on camera, that this, day two, whatever day three operations you want to call it, this is a huge deal because the scale of a disruption could have a ripple effect. We've seen that and people are nervous. So this is an important part that these services can be discovered, managed and instrumented. Yeah. So so if you think about those disruptions, I mean, we, we had some very recent examples, uh, I think in the, the last few, few, few days here. Mm -hmm. And uh, and those are actually it's most of the time a, a, a question of uh, you know what's your overall approach, what's your culture you have behind DevOps, behind even Dev, DevSecOps in this case, and making sure that when you think about that, it needs to be really entrenched into your processes, into your way of thinking about the uh, uh, about observability, but really thinking about like the services you want to give. To your different uh, to different uh, customers and to different like uh, applications. So I, I'll take maybe one example. Like you know, we we have uh, 
one of our like customers, like uh, Statsig, which is um, a joint kind of reference between uh, Google and, and Datadog, and they were really thinking about, hey, how do I want to go and migrate to Google Cloud? How I want to be able to move my workloads from uh, different vendors to Google Cloud? And the, the key thing for them, which is I think for all the different vendors and all the different like customer here, is like how do I do it with the less disruption that I can, maintaining my performance while still serving my end users. And this with a pretty large scale, which is really, really important for them. What, so, What's the reliability on that? You said you said it's scale. Is there some, rely, what's the reliability? Is it like 99%? Yeah, so actually the, the interesting part is, if I jump even to the, to the conclusion there, is like they, when they did that migrations with the Tadog, no disruptions for the different users, being able to have like, you know, GKE, BigQuery, memory stores for Redis, all out of the box deployed. And again, with those integrations we built between Datadog and uh, Google Cloud, being able to really get not even to nine to three nines, 99.9, .9, but actually managed to achieve four nines, 99.99 .99 reliability, and really doing this while they even increase their different like transaction volume that they were actually getting on their platform. So it's not just reliability with less volume, but reliability better with higher volume. So that's really, I think, the key part doing this as smooth as you can without disrupting, without even people understanding that behind the scene, you've changed something as critical as your, your cloud platform here. Stephen, weigh in on this, on criticality of the integrations are when you need uptime guarantees, reliability and confidence around the infrastructure working, whether that's failover, fault tolerance, just overall attention to detail on the engineering side. I know this is, a, we've talked about this in the past on other marvels. This is a huge deal right now. This is this, the whole, the world is looking at this. Yeah, I think Erie actually nailed it. I mean, in that particular customer example uh, that, that, we, uh, that we worked together on Statsig, their reliability went up, but not just on less data. They were actually taking more samples and we're looking at more of their environment and the reliability went up. And Again, it's one of the first things that customers ask us, okay, <laughs> I, I want to move to the cloud. I know I'm going to be able to get the higher agility and, and be able to react to customer demands uh, faster and better. But with that comes the responsibility of a larger environment that could be shifting with auto scaling events, et cetera. And, and really, you know, Datadog is just such a critical partnership for us to really help uh, customers be able to do that with, with speed and confidence. You know, scale's a double-edged sword, right? I mean, it's, you got the greatness of scale and the goodness of cloud, so you got to manage it. Is there any other examples that you guys can point to? You don't have to name names. I know this is a, a Statsig is a great ref, public reference, but you guys are involved in a lot of deals. I know you can't name names, but you know, there's a lot of large scale deployments that are really pushing the envelope on, on new software, certainly security's a challenge, and getting the best software enabled environments at the edge as well. Cloud's a big part of it. Can you guys share any other examples? You can anonymize it for me, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. I, I have, I think, one which, I mean, a few, but one type of uh, of case study, which is interesting, which is if we take, I mean, a, a large retailer company, or even like one of the gaming leader we see out there, uh, it's also becoming super important when you get into some of those spike seasons, like, you know, Black Friday, or you launching a new game and you really want to make sure that you have the right performance, you actually have the right um, experience for all your end users. This is really key where hey, you want to make sure that you be able to go and provide that, that value to your end users. And that's where data dogs come into play because we really help you monitor that performance ahead of time and during those even like uh, spike of, uh, of usage. And, and again, that's, that's where you know, bringing this information together, bringing this into that platform into Datadog is really critical. And that's, you know, I think something we're doing very well here at Datadog. Awesome. Guys, I want to say thanks for coming on this Marvel series. Steve, always a pleasure. Before we leave, I want to get your thoughts, just kind of the closing parting question. Um, there's more data coming in than ever before. I mean, we, every year it's like, oh, there's more than the past 20 years, now past five years time, whatever. Tons of data, unstructured and structured data. How do you guys stay on top of it? Obviously, Eriex on you guys, you're, this is your job. Your job is to make sure you get the right products. Steve, you got to make sure that, that you get the, the Google Cloud capabilities and all the right integrations. How do you guys stay ahead? Obviously machine learning and AI is going to be a big part of it. 
as you look forward, we have more data coming in, more lower latency requirements are, are there, the pressure to observe in context, it's just, it's a challenge. I know you guys are on top, that's what you guys do. Datadog is your differentiator. Thoughts on uh, how do you guys stay ahead of the game? I mean, for us, John, it's a combination of things. So we have a number of capabilities across Google Cloud, whether it be BigQuery, which is a world leading analytics tool or Gemini and Vertex to help customers take all that data and use it in machine learning models to make smarter decisions across their business. Uh, but beyond that, uh, you know, just the, the, in the context of this series, we want to make sure we have the broadest and most open ecosystem on earth to make sure that we have all of the capabilities that our customers need. Sometimes it's going to come for, uh, from us, but more often than not, it's going to come from our partners like Datadog who are building integrations and, and higher level services to, to, to help customers uh, achieve their outcomes. And, and then the only other thing I would add um, that we didn't you know, talk a lot about uh, throughout the rest of the conversation is in addition to all these integrations, you know, our, our teams in the field as we're working with customers have just become accustomed to working with each other. So our, our technical um, customer engineers and the, the Datadog customer engineers work very closely on all of these customer opportunities. And there's just a familiarity that makes it really easy to um, together help customers achieve some of their hardest outcomes. And, and you know, we're very grateful for that partnership. You're actually, you got the product roadmap ahead of you. You look at the keys yeah. of the kingdom. How do you stay ahead? AI, machine learning, AI embedded everywhere. <laughs> Tell us what's yeah. going on. Give us a, a peek. We, we, we do, by the way, I mean, one of the core thing for Datadog is we invest a lot into our R&D. We, we have like a pretty large investment into our, our engineering team. And, uh, and then we do like scale our platform to, I mean, we, we scale it way more than any customers would need individually. But we true for that massive amount of data, we like in embed more and more of AI ML solutions. We really bring that into, hey, how we help you doing some RCA, like root cause analysis, how to like understand what's happening into your environment. But we also help our customers doing it on their own environment because we also now start to have um, observability for your own LLM applications that really help customers understanding what's happening into my prompt, my responses, all those different you know, interactions. And we actually worked with Gemini to be able to train Gemini on Datadog, but also integrates with Gemini to understand that, hey, what's going to happen into those apps, being able to integrate that within your overall observability. So I think scale is only going to get bigger and bigger, uh, but now even more with LLM, even more with AI, we have tools to really go beyond just providing information, but really helping customers understand reason about those and act behind that. So that's really, I think the, the journey we've been on and we could continue investing on that with Datadog with like that pretty large engineering side and you know all the data scientists, AI, ML that we're building into the platform. Eric, congratulations to your team. You guys are great. And obviously scale is a competitive advantage for the folks who can get it right. Steven, you guys are bringing more scale, great. Great conversation, Stephen. Eriex, thanks for spending the time with me today on the Mar Marketplace Marvel series. Thanks, thanks for having us, man. Okay, yeah, you're right. watching the Marketplace Marvel series. These are the leaders that are bringing technology to the table to build the future. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE here in Palo Alto. Thanks for watching.